Greetings, greetings. Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome to Eagle and Your Voices Amplified. My name is Plot Marco Indeed. Welcome to yet another edition of uh, our uh, regular interviews where we speak to different creatives, uh, artists from Zimbabwe. And today I happen to be speaking to an, a content creator, an amazing social innovator who is creating uh, some great content. Her name is Ronika Chinga. She runs a project called Ndawana and Friends. And they are making cartoons, uh, cartoons that speak Shona and Sindebele, and also making some books. Super, super awesome stuff. So uh, I'm going to cross over to Ronika and then we uh, continue the conversation. But in the meantime, stay tuned. Ear ground. Hello, Ronika. Okay, we seem to have lost her, but uh, we're definitely going to make efforts to bring her back. Uh, in the meantime, I'll play a small snippet from one of the uh, cartoons. All aboard! Down and friends, down and shang, what is that? Finally, we managed to connect to Ronika. Hi. Hi, Plot. Hi, everyone. Makadini, Salibonani. I am so sorry for the network glitches I was having. Thank you so much for being patient. No, it's fine. Um, that's what happens with the network, especially when good things are about to happen. Right. <laughs> Great. So um, just to begin with, a lot of people that are watching right now that want to know uh, who is that first behind now one and friends? Who is Ronica? Well, I'm Ronica. Uh, as the introduction said, I'm a mom to an amazing little boy called Matipa. I'm a daughter. I'm a sister. I'm an auntie. Obviously, I got a nine to five. I'm a manager. I got a normal job, but uh, I'm just a person who's very passionate and um, about our culture, about our language, um, not just as Zimbabweans, but as Africans and as human beings around the world. Because um, language is almost like DNA for each human being. So uh, this is who I am. I'm very passionate about that. Uh, passionate about language, passionate about our culture. Um, but what what motivated you to start in Dawana and Friends? What, where did that idea uh, come from? Okay, so Munozia, uh, is it okay to get a mixed languages? I'm sure you got audience yeah. around the world. Yeah. But they do not try to show English and English, everything. You don't go Zanganese, right, Momo? Yeah, you know, like the multiple languages were so represented. Yeah, no, Saka, what inspired Dawana and Friends was per lockdown when all of us were at home and we were working and our kids were learning from home. Netflix, YouTube, which is fantastic, but I am personal content in a representer. 
And then a uh, one day Kanditi Amai, oh well, he said, Mom, I want green eyes and blonde hair. And they got, oh, okay. Gati mbo mirai papo, takufana kutu mbweta zhungeze, kona zhungeze ma boy, zhungeze wa rungu. Because the reason ya arukuda blonde hair, ne green eyes, is that's all he see. You know, saka arukucha gomu na nom representer, and there's not enough of that content representing him. Saka ndikati, okay, mwanangu, iwewe uchango chitu kaona one paw patrol, wona wanye ma boy, wona one pepper pig, wona wanye ma boy and so on and so forth. And unfortunately, there wasn't that much content. Yema boy and Yema Zimbabwean, the only thing that was there, which is fantastic and I'm grateful. Yeah. I have my nursery rhymes. But it wasn't really, there wasn't a lot of it. What is there is great, but do you know what here? There's no point just uh, complaining about it or sitting in a corner and feeling sorry for myself. I might as well do something and that's when Dawana and Friends was born and I was like let me do a cartoon where my child will get to one learn Shona and Debele two also see boys and girls that look like him uh, as you can see from the top uh, and that Africa I've got the characters when Dawana and Friends on there. Mm. Wow great um, so we seem to have uh, some network glitch there but uh, stay tuned. We're definitely going to reconnect with uh, Ronika. She tells us the story behind uh, Dawana and, uh, and and friends. And uh, stay tuned. Yes, uh, we had lost you there, but you were telling us about uh, what motivated you to start Andawana and Friends. And uh, such an amazing platform. There are a couple of comments that are actually come in through. Uh, Cindy Put says, hello, Uncle Plot and Dawana. Uh, Tinash says, I'm there. And uh, Tongai Hitsama Tanga uh, says, my book, I'm like, yeah, well done, Dawana. <laughs> Thank wow. you. This is quite great. I mean, that you started the lockdown situation where a lot of people are hopeless uh, and stuck in a situation where they are not able to do their normal work. You found an opportunity there. You have created a platform that has grown in content. Uh, you've created some cartoons. Now you have books. You have also merchandise, which is quite impressive. Um, do you see yourself achieving that goal of getting people to appreciate the local languages and the local culture through the one in front. Oh gosh. I hope so. My friend and I, so I got friends who are also content creators who are doing stuff for the culture and the language. And we have given ourselves nickname Kuti Tirima Freedom Fighters, my liberation struggle. Um I said that is my comrades. So I need to comment Dawana because it just feels like a battle, it feels like a war, you know. So do, do I think I can achieve it? Not on my own. I can't achieve it on my own. It's going to take a collective. And by a collective, just like an army, there are different roles played in an army. And that's the same thing that's going to happen with this movement. We're going to need content creators. We're going to need parents. We're going to need kids. We're going to need influencers. We're going to need different people. We're going to need people like Uncle Plot, 
who you know showcases people like myself so that people know could punish genu out there zukuitwa for our content with abantwana betu lathi abantu abakhulu sibe sifunda isishona isindebele isindawo isikhore khore there are 16 official zimbabwean languages did you know that I didn't know it until I started this project. So it's just gonna take a collective effort and it's gonna take people supporting, it's gonna take people just clicking that subscribe button, just yeah. buying the books, just buying the merchandise. But a short answer to your question is, yes, I think I can do it with the help and support of everybody else. Wow, but I mean, as a mother, as somebody who's got a nine to five, and now you're a content creator, uh, possibly amongst many other initiatives that you're also involved in. How do you balance all of this time? Uh, I can just imagine how much pressure this could be bearing on you. It's not easy. As you know, being a mom on itself is a full-time job. And it is. Being an employee is a full-time job. Now add content creation. Now add, you know, being diligent. It's diligence that keeps me going. Because for me, to every Saturday, I've got a show that I do. Sometimes I wake up, I'm not in the mood. Sometimes I just want to stay in bed or lounge on the sofa, but because I have committed myself to do it, I wake up, I put on my little studio and I get on with it. And I have to make time for my son. So it's diligence, it's organization. Do not waste some diary, kuti. One hour I'm going to come up, one hour undivided attention, yeah, my wake. And then you my content I'm going to create. And you know it's own diary, kuti. I'm going to do one hour of looking at how I can improve this project. So it's just a lot of diligence, it's a lot of um organization, and most importantly, it's commitment that keeps me going. Wow. Commitment that keeps you going. And where are you taking that commitment to? Like, what, what's what's the bigger picture? Uh, is the one and friends going to end with just the books and the cartoons? Is there more that you have at the back of your head or planned um, as the future of when the one is headed? Gosh, sky's the limit. I haven't limited myself, um, plot. Uh, you know, the other day you and I were talking and we want to do a uh, sponsorship, like almost like a, a scholarship to encourage people to take our local languages from O level to do A level, preferably go to university, do their degrees in our local languages. So that's one aspect that we're working on. Uh, I'd like to have Ndawana and friends move Movie. I'd like to have a Dawana and Friends video game where children choose their character and they play a video game in our local languages. I'd like to see a point where when people are talking about languages that are well are known in the world, Sean and Devele will be one of those when they mention English, Spanish, French, Shona, Devele. <laughs> but why is it important for for, for for people to learn those languages. Um, somebody could argue that, look, we're living in a global world where uh, you have to speak maybe the global business languages for you to find yourself around. But wh why do you find it necessary for one to encourage their kids and family to actually learn and speak uh, Shona, Isndebele, Tonga, or another uh, local Zimbabwean language? Fantastic question. You said it, we live in a global world, but yeah. at the end of the day, yeah. your language is your DNA. Inini, diri, Ronika, Miera Shumba, Dovakuma Shingo, dirim Zimbabwean. So no matter where I go in the world, I'm always going to be identified by those things. You know, I'm a mixture of my mom and my dad. My mama, a mixture of, my mom's a mixture of her mom and her dad. Shidaro is Shidaro. Now, Isusu Tikarasa language, you know, that makes me who I am. As much as I live in a global environment, mm -hmm. I can't run away from the fact that I'm Zimbabwean. And my child can't run away from the fact that he's half Zimbabwean and half British. Zichida, Rosaka, why should we forsake our language, which is a major part of who we are? For me, that, that is always my argument. And another thing is it's not an uh, 
either Shona or either English. Let's make it both. It's not either German or Shona. Let's make it both. It's not either French or Debele. Let's make it both, you know, and even it's, it's not either Shona or Debele. Let's make it both. Our languages are our DNA as Zimbabweans, just like they are the DNA of my British, just like, you know, and so on and so forth. My point is, your language is your DNA. It's what identifies you. So why not be in touch with it? Why not identify? Why not know where you come from and who you are? And That's do you see people, especially Zimbabweans, losing that DNA? Uh, is it something that uh, concerns or worries you as a content creator to say, look, uh, we're losing our languages. Um, now that Zimbabweans are global citizens, uh, they are children that are born from the third culture that are not speaking any of the local or native languages from where their parents are born, uh, not by choice, but by circumstances of where they are born and where they are living. But do you see Zimbabwe losing the DNA or it's something uh, that cannot possibly happen? Um, I think Zimbabwe is uh, lose Zimbabweans are losing that, and not only Zimbabweans. It's almost like an African phenomenon. Not only an African phenomenon. Even Asians complain about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but back to your question, let's zoning it back to Zimbabweans. Yes, it is um, a big worry because. At school, they teach English. On TV, it's English. Everything is English. So naturally, your default, English. Yet, somehow, we need to make it a dedication for us, Kuti, as parents. We have to say, okay, Kuchkoro, Chirungu, Nepanze, Chirungu, but Kanawapinda Mumba, Gati Chitai embrace our local language. Gati Taure Shona, Gati Taure Ndebele, you know, because the natural thing is at school especially in zimbabwe they assume the responsibility on the parents to teach shona and it on the or the local languages and then when you now come home because mama did you chirungu the time for them to teach us the language is not there. Second, we are just going back to speaking English, 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 and forgetting to embrace our Shona, our Ndebele, our local languages. So it's very important, Kutijoni, um, Tita, a conscious effort, Kutijoni. So at least can I cheat a dialogue neni na mai or na baba ekatora neni ne local language. Then that la local language will always continue. That's what I think. Wow, that is great. And uh, for somebody who wants to connect with them, Dawana and friends, uh, wants to uh, maybe engage with the content, they want to buy books, they want to watch the shows, where do they find this? Okay, so you can watch the show on YouTube, which is fantastic. Sakakambo Chagandawana and Friends on YouTube, then you can find us. And we've got these amazing uh, Let's Learn Shona and Let's Learn Basic Ndebele books. You can get these at South Borders. These books are a great and easy start, you know. You just see, Kuti, is how you say the word, like, yesterday is the Zuro, and then it shows you how it's pronounced. So it's a very easy way of starting in your language learning journey and uh when you're at home nasi mkati the word for today di samugele you know saka mnege mshtogo na kutaura okay nasi word yenu is samugele so you can finish the whole book and learn so many words and that is how you begin this journey and you can get these books from southorders.com and also, if you're in Australia, we've got an Australian distributor. And if yeah. you're in Cape Town, we have a Cape Town distributor. We're trying to, sorry, we're trying to make sure that these books are everywhere. So if um, your country is not one of the ones that I've listed, please inbox me. If you come to our Facebook page, inbox me and say, Ronica, I want a book. I can make a book be available. We've sent books to Canada, America. We've sent books to Netherlands, Germany. We are not limited. Just because it's not on the website, it doesn't mean that we can't reach out to you. Oh, that is great. And, um living in the diaspora for so many years, what still makes you connected to Zimbabwe that much? Because I'm thinking uh, you could have easily forgotten uh, 
uh, or given up like on what's happening in Zimbabwe in terms of just promoting the language, promoting the culture. You could have just concentrated with your life there, done what you're doing there, your, your kid and your work, and that's it, you know, but you decided to do this project. Why necessarily uh, for you as a diaspora do you find it as something that you need to continue doing? Um, the reason I still stay connected to my Zimbabwean roots, it, it, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I've always been in touch in a Zimbabwean side, Yangu, like I, I loved it. No, you know, I went through a period and a phase where I would try to be Congolese, I would try to be Jamaican, try to be Nigerian, try to be Ghanaian, <laughs> try to be South African, try to be everything but Zimbabwean. But wow. guess what? Life is a full circle. You always have circumstances and times and things that are going to remind you, Kuti, you are Zimbabwean. Kuba Sachaiko, I work for a Japanese company. They're always asking me, where are you from? First, I used to say, I'm British. And then they'll be like, no, where are you from? I'd say, oh, no. My parents were born in Zimbabwe. Then they'll be like, then you're Zimbabwean. <laughs> You know that once, and then that okay, cool. And then we end up with my, we end up my Nigerian church, and then we want to go to tell a Yoruba or Pigeon English, and believe it or not, I can speak Pigeon English because that's yeah. how much I tried to embrace it. But then when it comes, to try wants to fit in. So, <laughs> but then when it comes down to it, find the boons that say, "Oh no, Zimbabwe." And then you can tell they're looking at you like you, you got identity crisis because you can speak some Yoruba, you can speak some Pigeon, you understand a bit of Ghanaian and Twi and stuff like that, but you don't know nothing about your Zimbabweanness. Wow. Why am I running around trying to be everything but who I am? This is why I started embracing my Zimbabwean side. And I really, I'm still learning. And I love who we are. We are, we are, we come from a rich culture. We come from, we've got so much to offer. It's unbelievable. But because we all shunned it, we never took time to make it mainstream. We never took time to learn it. Because as you said, we do have some toxic things that are happening in our country right now, which make us just think, and each other should go to Zimbabwe. But yeah. you know what? We have to learn to compartmentalize Kwisajinumuma compartments. You know, we do have a fun culture. We are a good people. We are an intelligent people. Tinema languages, good food, let's pick the good parts, you know, and that's what makes us who we are. Wow, that is great. That is great. You just made my day. Um, I, I feel encouraged. I feel uh, some sort of renaissance because, you know, when you're in the diaspora, there's so many times when you just tend to forget where you're coming from uh, mm -hmm. because the world around you is, is foreign and then you start to fit in. Uh, but thank you so much. It's been awesome. It's been great. I would love to have you again on the program uh, when the new. Uh, chapters of Ndawana and Friends come out or any other new productions are out. Um, but you said for those that want to get the books, they go on southorders.com, southorders.com, right? Yes, yes, right. yes. Or Lynn, uh, Shona, Basic Shona, and Debele on uh, with Ndawana and Friends on uh, yes. Facebook or Ndawana and Friends on YouTube. Email. Ndawana LTD at gmail.com. Okay, great. So, yeah, there you have it uh, to everybody who's been watching. Thank you so much. I've been unable to read all the comments, but I've been seeing my love, Nima, like Sangha Shumaka. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it, 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 it says that um, people are appreciating the work that you're doing, and I think you. you need to continue doing it. Uh, there's definitely a child who's there who's going to make reference to Darwin and friends some 20 years from now. Uh, when they're standing there winning a Grammy or an Oscar and saying, look, you know what, it took the one influence for me to realize the importance for me to learn my language uh, from my homeland. Can I say something before I go? Yeah. I just wanted to say, you know, as parents, 
uh, we are doing a great disservice to our kids when we don't teach them about our language and we don't teach them about our culture. Uh, and I'll tell you why, especially in Kunokuku, UK, where there's a lot of Nigerians. Vanavedu, their counterparts who are Nigerian, they are being taught the language from when they are young. They are being taught the culture. So, a Nigerian child, you know, culture respect. Because this is what gives them their identity, their confidence to know that I'm an African. You know, so let's not do our children a disservice and not teach them who they are, where they come from. And uh, last, last thing is representation matters. If you've got a story. Yes. Well, if you've got a cartoon, please do it. Because, you know, um, one of my customers who bought everything, I sent her a mug. You know this monk for to just yes. say th thank you, and she yes. sent me a screenshot saying my daughter asked how did I wanna you know it me so my heart melted because TV muma books muma shelves at supermarket saga iwewe uchiwona nasi. And you've got a story you wanted to write. You've got a cartoon you wanted to write. Do it because our kids need it. Paw Patrol doesn't represent them. Mickey Mouse Club doesn't re represent them. Do something that represents them, you know, because I could preach and preach and preach. I'm very passionate about this language and culture thing, but it really also helps our kids have an identity of who they are. And it's not necessarily just with diaspora. Even with Zimbabwe, Chaiko, our kids need stuff that belongs to them. And that's it from me. Otherwise, if you need to hear more from me, come to my Saturday show every Saturday, 1 p.m. Great. When you started at 1 p.m. UK time. 2 p.m. Zimbabwe in time. Remember to check out Dawana and friends uh, every Saturday. So, yeah, tomorrow you're live on the show. So, yeah, thank you so much. It's been awesome to have you on the program. I really appreciate the time that you took from your busy schedule to be on this program. And everybody who's been tuned in, thank you so much for being part of this program. We appreciate the support that you guys are giving us. Uh, Ear Ground is getting an average of 500 new followers every day. So, it's quite encouraging that. Uh, you guys are supporting the work that we're doing. And also, the likes of Dawana and friends are also supporting, partnering with us on our programs and other broadcasts and other uh, initiatives to promote our languages and our literary and uh, creative arts. And uh, yeah, big up to Ivan. <laughs> Mr. Ivan Bake. <laughs> Please, can I now kind of like, precise like, precise love, and can I now go subscribe? Go to the YouTube channel, subscribe to Dawana and Friends, subscribe to Ear Grounds YouTube channel as well. But I want that Great, thank you so much. Yeah, keep it locked. Ear Ground is the place. Um, until next time. My name is Plot Malka. I'll be speaking there to Veronica Chinga. I'm out.